here on behalf of All Israel News. And as you can see, and you've probably seen, there are protests happening right here in the Klal. It's in the city center in the heart of Jerusalem. But why? What's going on in the pavilion? Is there are believers from all over Israel gathering to lift up the name of Jesus? They're singing songs in Hebrew that are based on scripture and people aren't so happy about it. McHenry reporting for All Israel News. We're here in the demonstration where they're preventing the Messianic Jewish believers from entering the conference right behind me. All because they're believers in Yeshua. This is the reason why they're protesting. This is heartbreaking. It seems like this that reminds us why the two witnesses will show up. The early church was comprised of Jews. The gospel was preached to the Jew first, then to the Gentile. This is a reaction to believers just worshiping and singing songs of praise to Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Christ, Jesus, the Messiah, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to point out a few things relative to biblical prophecy concerning the Jews and why there was this protest by a group of Jews against an assembly of Jews and Gentiles in Christ. This is tough to watch. Shalom everyone, this is Ty Green. These Jews in protest have not yet understood some of which we take for granted how the seven feasts of the Lord outlined within Leviticus chapter 23 foreshadow what Jesus would do on the exact day. The interaction between God and the Jew is extremely important. I'm going to try to articulate my point and be as brief as possible as to what we saw take place at this concert in Israel is a reminder of what happened thousands of years ago in Israel concerning Jesus and what is to come. This revealing of Jesus Christ is the revelation of Jesus Christ. We see this in the first book of the book of Revelation. Folks all over the world, both Jew and Gentile, are going to know what we in Christ may already take for granted. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the Son of God. We take this for granted as common knowledge for the believer, but there are many in Israel and abroad that do not believe, so it will be revealed. During Israel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble, the two witnesses are upon the earth. The focus, the children of Israel. They will prophesy for a time and then they will be killed right there in Israel. Revelation chapter 11 verse 3 and verse 8 details this. And I will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. That's Revelation chapter 11 verse 3. Verse 8 says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. This will happen in Jerusalem. 
The Lord will be reaching out to the non-believing Jews greatly during this time of affliction upon the earth after the time of fullness of the Gentiles come in. Within the word of God, this effort to save the Jew has already been happening. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem during that triumphant entry, he represented salvation, right? He came to save in Israel was to be first. Zechariah chapter nine, verse nine. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king comes unto thee. He is just and having salvation. Lowly and riding upon a donkey and upon a colt, the foal of a donkey. Many non-believing Jews do not yet see this. We pray that they do along with the rest of the Gentile world. Salvation is through Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 53, we're told, is a forbidden book amongst Orthodox Jews. It describes a man being offered up for the sins of us all and likened him as a lamb. Look at this. Isaiah chapter 53 just a few verses here to point this out. Let's pick it up at verse six. Isaiah says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb so he opened not his mouth Isaiah chapter 53 even describes that he was killed for the transgressions of a certain group of people verse 8 he was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation for he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken you see that this is just a snapshot of how God informed the children of Israel of what was to come so that they would recognize him when he showed up even in the book of Daniel chapter 9 we see the time frame in which they were to expect him right just one area in scripture that does this the Messiah verse 26 connects us to Isaiah chapter 53 verse 8 where we see the Messiah cut off but not for himself look at this Daniel chapter 9 verse 26 and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off but not for himself see that and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary we know this is the event in 70 AD where Rome destroyed the city of Jerusalem and the second temple and the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war desolations are determined at this point within scripture the Messiah shows up during the time of the second temple but after the first temple and the city of Jerusalem was destroyed he would be cut off from the land of the living he would be killed sacrificed but not for himself, not for anything that he does. It's for the transgression of my people, the prophet Isaiah says. The iniquity of us all. Are you seeing this? So many non-believing Jews, like we saw protesting at the Messianic Jews and Christians concert in Israel, many of these Jews will come to know Jesus as the Messiah. And how do we know this? Well, the Lord says so right here in Matthew chapter 24, verse nine. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Jesus is talking to Jewish believers about a future event that involves Jewish believers. They will be delivered up to be afflicted. They will be killed. They will be hated of all nations. And the key is, this is happening to them for his name's sake.
And we know this broadens out to the saints in general during that time. But here our focus is on the Jewish people. During the time of the revealing of Jesus Christ, many Jews will come to know Christ, but most are summed up in this recent comment regarding the protest in Israel. Look, the Jews here were against your missionary activity. Keep your idolatry to yourselves and just leave the Jews alone. Remember how we've studied the three charges against Jesus recorded in the Jewish rabbinical writings, idolatry, sorcery, and the leading of the Jews astray? Now check out this video, the shocking evidence that Jesus is real for a deeper Bible study on this. See, because we worship Jesus as the Christ, we are counted as idolaters. His miracles counted as sorcery. His ministry counted as as leading the Jews astray. The revealing must happen for all that do not believe. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 says, Behold, he comes in the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Notice the reference to they which pierced him. This is the non-believing Jews. We also see this in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. See that? And they shall mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn, see? Massive efforts by God himself coming up specifically toward the children of Israel, that they may believe. The time of the Gentiles will soon end and the focus will yet again return toward Israel. Romans 11, verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So there is a time frame to this. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. You see what's going on here? For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as you in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so, have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God has concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. So pray for the salvation of our loved ones, both Jew and Gentile, for the believer and the non-believer, for the strength of the believer to keep on keeping on for the Lord, for the salt of the earth to not lose its savor, and for the non-believer to come to know the love of the truth through Jesus Christ, to see the error of their way and repent of sin, and see the gift of God and embrace him. Today is the day of salvation. You can be prepared to meet God right now. You must believe in your heart that Jesus died for you on that cross. For we have all sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. For we all have a sin debt that we cannot pay. The wages of sin is death, right? So we must trust in what Jesus did for us upon that cross. We must believe it with our hearts and confess it with our mouths. Jesus was buried and on the third day, God raised him up. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, 
he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So just come as you are. Look at this. Titus 3, verses 3 through 7. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. All right, I will leave it right there. We must use our remaining time wisely. Amen. Live holy before the Lord. Love y'all. Shalom.